It began in 2006 when I had uh, the great honor, uh, the great privilege of having our first trip to Turkey. And I had been thinking for some time, I wonder, is there a way of using our kind of tribal peacemaking methods to help include the common ground of ethical, caring, compassionate business people, the people who believe in stewardship, the people who believe in relationship, who believe in the long term and not just short term profit. Isn't there a way to bring that to a principled approach to business negotiation so that the fundamental driving spirit and principles of Sharia can be honored without actually having to say the word? And so we end up now with this project where in our second year, we met in Istanbul. And my husband, the professor of world religion, uh, who's much bolder than I, said, you know, both of us agreed. People who are teaching this need to have the experience of community of business people, people who see their world as more than just a balance sheet, as we experienced in Istanbul. There's a key question here. Is it possible in the rough and tumble of the business world to actually try to assume that maybe sometimes when people say it's about principle, that they mean it? Basically, nobody in this group of 24 people ever believed that that was true. Excuse me, once they grew up, as far as they were concerned, and went out in the world, they did not believe it was true, and therefore they never taught it as being true. We were fortunate to be able to meet with the Confederation of Turkish Businessmen, and I went back again a few months later and met some more and did some follow-up questions just to make sure that I was clear and not getting uh, a, a too narrow a picture of it. And what we came up with was, um, underline it all, uh, yes, we will try to work in good faith according to our values. We'll also kind of feel out the other side to see if they're in accordance with it. If they're not, we'll switch. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes down to trust God but tie your camel. It was a very personal journey for many people because of, I, and I must admit I had completely forgotten or not noticed that many people in our westernized American group were not immigrants or their immigrant story was sufficiently far back that it wasn't part of their narrative or the way they saw themselves anymore. So they didn't quite get that idea of people having multiple identities but still being themselves. It was a very hard sell to get people to understand that just because somebody is dressed in Tommy Hilfiger or Brooks Brothers or whatever, just because they went to the Ivy League schools, that doesn't mean that they have accepted all of your same Western material values. In business, it also required us to take another look at and respect the traditions of Islam and commerce that go back a lot farther than the Uniform Commercial Code in the United States or the World Trade Organization or the European Union. It is something that our Hizmet movement business people helped us with so much. And that was having the courage and the trust in us to articulate, to say out loud, the content of the business customs. And those customs, the ritual of hospitality, it was overwhelming. It was like a tsunami for so many of our participants in this experiment, in this dialogue. There are very different things about negotiation, mostly in my paper, but I call them the three T's. Tempo, that the pace of everything is much slower. Tea, the three cups of tea. Had to explain that. And trust, that all of those are building towards trust so that you have some comprehension of whether this is a person that you want to and can handle having a long-term business relationship with. Is there hope? Does this matter? Yes, it absolutely does. When I look at the poetry, the wisdom, the philosophy, that even if it's just slow but constant, deliberate progress, it matters. And it may seem as if what the Hizmet movement is doing is just a little stream, but that's also the way the Grand Canyon was cut.
My speech was, as much as anything else, a thank you to the Hizmet movement, uh, to the Turkish Raindrop House in Oklahoma City, uh, to the connections with the Confederation of Turkish Bis Businessmen uh, for making an incredible opportunity available, a seed uh, for scholars, researchers, practitioners in negotiation and mediation around the world to understand a lot more about what stewardship in business is about. And so that hopefully as we continue teaching people about how business works in different places around the world, we'll have a lot more respect and understanding for the kind of Islamic cultural values that one finds everywhere. And our entryway for that were the Hizmet movement business people. They were astoundingly fine.